Right, I thought I'd make a short video describing my connection of my um, Raspberry Pi to the uh, MSP430 to the um, infrared receiver chip that I have over here. Now this project was um, brought about because I wanted to connect my um, infrared controller to my uh, TV and um, obviously control it. I've got a very old MythWeb um, setup that doesn't have, um, hasn't been updated for a long time so it's, I won't go into that at the moment but anyway I thought I'd describe the circuit here how it all fits together um, I originally had this guy fit connected to the Raspberry Pi directly but um, on, on one of the GPIO pins I just found that the um, speed was a bit slow, I was using Python and um, so I thought oh, I'm going to be buying a um, MSP430, that's a microcontroller um, board that you get from Raspberry Pi. It's only four dollars thirty, by the way, if you want to buy one. Pretty cheap. It was delivered. So I thought this would be better to have as a um, timing circuit, or you know, the system to manage the um, inputs from the from the the uh, IR chip. So anyway, um, let's let's start from this end over here and just describe how it all works because you know we learnt a lot along the way to do this, but you can read more on the blog for, for, for information. This device here um, is a little infrared receiver. And what it does is uh, it detects a, when you press a button on the remote control, it receives the infrared signal from the remote. The remote has a, um, a, 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 a pulse which um, sort of oscillates around 38K or 40K depending on the chip, but this one's set up for 38K. So when it sees a, um, a square wave oscillating at um, 38K, it, uh, one of its pins um, becomes um, it's normally high at 5 volts, comes down to 0 volts or whatever, and then when it's got no signal, it goes back up again to the original setting. So it's just a very simple thing. It, it's got a little bit of circuitry inside it. The key bit of information is this, that uh, the, the Pi runs at 3.3, the um, MSP430 runs at 3.3, and this runs at 5. So um, how we solve that problem of getting the, the voltage down to 3.3 so it be, can be inputted into the um, MSP430 is uh, the internal uh, a diagram for the um, this chip says it's got a 22 I think it's a 22k resistor inside it um, you can double check that so um, what we did was uh, set up a little voltage divider with um, th that chip and the, um, th the resistor here this is actually um, two resistors in series which add up to the correct voltage I have the details on the blog or whatever, but uh, essentially you've got a, a voltage divider between the, the internals of this resistor and th this here, which goes directly into the input for that for the um, MSP430. So I won't describe it here, maybe in the blog a bit more clear, clearly. So um, the the uh, five volts comes from the Raspberry Pi. There's a five volt pin on the GPIO, it goes into the, into the um, chip here. The output gets divided with the resistor and um, the input comes along this cable here well, I'm sorry about my soldering it's just a temporary fit setup at the moment um, so that sorry that's not quite the cable yes yes it is so that comes through to the cable and then into the um, input here on the right on the um, MSP430 onto pin uh, was it P 2.3 so port 2 th third pin so the input comes into the Raspberry Pi from that the Raspberry Pi has got two loops which um, we can dis discuss later but um, the first mode it, it does is it checks the, the timing and it um, counts the time spaces between the uh, pulses that um, come from the other chip. So it goes, um, it's got an internal counter, the uh, interrupt setup, and then it counts how many pulses in between. Um, once it's it's uh, got all the pulses, the way that it detects that is it waits for an internal timeout of about, I think it's about uh, 50 milliseconds or so of non-activity when that pin is high. Um, then it gets ready to send the information to the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi um, uh, GPIO pins are, are communicated with these very badly soldered three wires over here. The first one um, on, let me see, P2.0, the first pin of port 2. Um, when, when it's got data, it goes high, um, telling the Raspberry Pi that there is data ready to be read. Um, the Raspberry Pi then um, on the next pin is a data pin, uh, so, so the MSP430 puts the data onto the, the data pin, um, the Raspberry Pi reads that bit, um, once it's read the bit it toggles the last pin 
which is the um, the you know data ready or ready or acknowledge pin if you like the last one which is p2.2 at the moment on that on this one so and um, when it's done that the internals of the uh, msp430 um, send put the next bit on um, this this just waits uh, just a very short time for the next bit so it's it, to, to read so you know the this is quite reliable on the timing so this um, reads the the bits as they come off and then acknowledges it down the, the line transferring the data to the um, MSP 430 uh, sorry the uh, Pi the, the Pi the Pi um, has got a Python program strangely enough um, which uh, takes each bit assembles each bit into a, um, a string of uh, commands detects the the time based on what has been put in previously and then uh, sends a command off to the myth server to press the up key or the down key or the play key or the record key etc so yeah that's that's the basic operation of it um, a few things I did this uh, three port setup here because I wanted to um, do everything manually you know old school kind of style instead of having an SP1 um, connection I just did the the um, three three pins so it's all binary as you know as you get it um, it's a bit nasty at the moment because I don't, I don't have any jumper leads at the moment so I just use the very board here to basically get the thing that's pretty nasty soldering but anyway that's how um, we basically connect everything up this uh, the, I don't know why more people don't use the MSP430 to connect to the Raspberry Pi because these are just connected directly on um, from pin to pin without any resistors um, because they both run at 3.3 volts internally so it's quite useful and um, yeah so I'll be using the um, launch pad if you like more often than that so yeah I just thought, thought I'd show you that quickly you can see the other end what it looks like and um, yeah I hope that's helpful for someone and hopefully I won't be too lazy and I'll have a good write up on uh, the site otherwise enjoy cheers